Okay, verse 12 of chapter 5. It says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Why should we be rejoicing and exceedingly, exceedingly glad? Because we belong to the Father. And we're going to see Him face to face. That's why we should be exceedingly glad. There's, no, there's nothing the world can do to us to take that away. There's nothing. That should be something that we can't wait. We can't wait to see our Lord, our Father, our God. In fact, to tell you the truth, it's a command from the Lord that we're going to be glad. Because I mean, He says, "Rejoice and be exceeding." He said, "Rejoice and be exceedingly glad." He's telling us to be that way. He don't have to tell us though, because we should be that way anyway. I mean, the day we see our God, oh my gosh, this body right here, this. He better be ready because I'll have a heart attack or something. <laughs> I mean, it's, to see God face to face, I think uh, we can have all kind of imaginations about that. But uh, I think it's going to be scary seeing God. I mean, when we comprehend who God is, who God is. I mean, a lot of people, oh, yeah, I believe in God. Like, it's just... I believe, yeah, I believe in God, but we're talking about the God we know who is alive. Comprehend who God is, especially in our life. We should be so at all. There's really hardly any words that can express it. You know, the world can take many things away from us, but they can't take our gladness away that we have in the Lord. Our happiness, our, our, our salvation. They can take a lot of stuff away from us, but not that. That's something the Lord has given us, and they can't take it away. That right there, most of the stuff I'm going to say tonight, praise God. If I don't hear any amens tonight, I'm not teaching next week. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but our rewards, he says we are persecuted for his sake. And he says great is our reward. Amen? Great is our reward. <laughs> In Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And if children, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. And the reason we're joint heirs with Christ is because in Hebrews 1 2, Hebrews 1 2, it says, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by His Son, whom he hath appointed heir to all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So he's the heir, the son, Jesus, <clears throat> and that makes us joint heirs with, with, with the Lord. So just like the Lord right here, it says, whom he hath appointed heirs of all things. Everything belongs to the Lord. Everything. You want to know how rich you are? That's how rich you are. <laughs> That's pretty rich. Yeah. You know, you can take all the, you can put all the richest men in the world together, together, and they don't have what we have. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's saying a lot. Yeah. Saying a lot. We should have shook this room. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I mean, really, seriously, think about it. It's true. We don't know how blessed we are. We really don't. We really don't. I'm getting there, but I'm gonna be looking strange to y'all. Because the more and more I study, and I've been studying a long time, but the closer I get to the Lord, I'm just at all. You know, I'm just like, God. I mean, to read, these are the words of God. The words of God. This is not the words of uh, uh, someone who wrote a book, and I don't know who, I'm not much on books, but you take a famous writer. This is by God. Okay, this is the Lord our God wrote this book. He inspired the men to write what was in here. He told them what to write. This is God's words. And I don't know if I can tell y'all enough or explain it to y'all how serious I take that. I take that. So I take it very, very serious. Uh, in John chapter 6, verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, 
that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have an everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last <coughs> days. This is, uh, these promises that we have, like this, those of us who believe, those of us who are born-again Christians, the Lord says, I will raise him up in the last days. The Lord is going to take us out of here in the last days. We know, we know about the rapture. He's going to take us out of this stinko. And this is what this world is, is a stinko. I mean, it's worse than a stinko. I'm being nice. All right? Yeah. So, I mean, when we read stuff like this, I will raise him up in the last days. You know, sometimes I'm like, I just stop right there and I, I, I'm, that's enough for me. I could, I could die with happiness just knowing that. But uh, I'm just showing here how we should take the Word of God. And when we read His words, we're not reading a book. This is not just a book. And I believe that a lot of people take it that way. It's just a book they read. And I know several people who said, oh, I've read the Bible. Like, oh, I've read that. Like it was some other book, you know, just another book. This is not the pages, not the material, but this is this this is holy, man. Yes, like Hebrews four twelve says, it's alive, it's quick, and it's powerful. It is quick and it is powerful. It's, this will, I mean, people who take this series, you will not be the same. If you believe it, you will not be the same. And I, some of these things I'm going to say is like, I know y'all have heard it before, but it's like, I want y'all to really hear it. I mean, really hear what I'm saying. Not what I'm saying, but what the Word of God is saying. I mean, really hear it. Because we hear, I mean, I'm sorry, but I really get fed up in, with this church when the preacher's preaching. I mean, I, I got to hold myself down because he's preaching in the spirit. I just want to get up and holler. And I don't. But I want to. And, but I, I, and I shouldn't be looking at other people. I know it's my fault. But it's like, can y'all not hear what he's saying? Why isn't everybody in here acting like... Oh, I'll, I'll edit it. I, th- I feel very convicted that the reason I don't feel like you do is because I'm not spending the time in the Word that you are. And that's why nobody's up shouting. Because it's not as personal as it is when you, when, you know, when you do what God says to do, which is to spend time in His Word, you're going to feel like that. Mm-hmm. I do. It's um, convicting. I don't know if it's the reason they don't, but I do. And when I hear the pastor, like I said, when I hear him... He's preaching this. And when he's preaching this, I... Uh, yeah, see, I've been silent for the last year. I was like, what? You know, I don't, am I the only one out of place here or what? Well, there's a lot of people feeling that way. So I feel like there's, there's, I if anybody it. was um, felt like that was what they were, you know, supposed to be more expressive, then you, there might, we might see some sort of change. Like this one here? It was up to her? We'd sit in the back. <laughs> she, she's who she wants to sit... In the last row. <laughs> but me, I want to get up close to the pastor. But one of these days, I'm going to give the Holy Spirit the victory and I'm going to forget what's around me. Because really, yeah, I'm serious. I, I quench. Just listen to the scriptures that I give. Just listen to them. If I say something you don't like, well, forget what I said. Just listen to the scriptures. Listen to the scriptures more than me. You know, because the scriptures, they say a whole lot than what I can say. Uh, Excuse me. Matthew 25, verses 31 through 34. It says, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another. And as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats, and He shall set the sheep... <clears throat> on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come. Now this is us. We're on the right hand. This is what the Lord is going to say to us. Okay? This is what the Lord is going to say to us. You, come, ye blessed of my Father. 
inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. He's, <laughs> he's, he says he has prepared this from the foundation. Like I said before, the Lord has foreseen everything from the beginning to the end. He has foreseen already what's going to happen. So he knows who's going to accept them and who's going to reject them. But he's saying, okay, I, there's, there's going to be some, and it is some. Broad is the way to hell, narrow is the way to heaven. So there's going to be some who do accept them. And for those who do accept them, he's going to say, come. Come into this ki- kingdom that, I'm, that I've prepared for you. And also, what we said a while ago, John 14, verse 2 and 3. I'm sorry. I'm, it's, it's hard for me to teach sometimes. Because re- I read this, and I just want to... I'm like... Like I'm exhausted, like I'm like, God, you know. But it says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I just think, I think of me, okay? I think how... uh, uh, how I'm, I'm so unworthy of this. Oh, seriously, I think how how much I am not worthy to even be in the same place with the Lord. But He's doing this for us. He's doing this for us. Oh man, His that grace, that love and grace that He has for us, that mercy. Oh. That's why a lot of times when I pray, all I know how to say is thank you. You know, that's all I know to do. That's all. I just say thank you. I say, I don't know how many times I've said thank you to the Lord. I mean, that, that, when I'm praying, a lot of times, that's all I can say. Right. I, I don't say anything else because that's, that's all that's on my heart is thank you because I know how good He is to us. Because I know me. <laughs> and why He gave me such love and such grace. And not only that, I mean, really, seriously, he said, Jesse, I'm preparing a place for you. (laughs) And you know what? When you believe this, that's when you're going to mourn. You're going to hate sin because this is what he's doing for us. This is when we understand that this is what he's doing for us. We're going to hate the sin against him. We're going to hate sin. James 1 12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterwards, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love Him. Are y'all hearing it? What the Lord is saying? A crown of life. A crown of life. Remember, and I say we, because it was we. We spit on Him. We rejected Him. We tortured Him. And we put Him to death. And, th- and this is what he's done. Because I, like I said, I don't look at the Jews and say, man, how could have they done that? Because I was doing that myself. I mean, so many times when I was lost, I just, I mean, I didn't want to hear about them. I didn't want to talk about them. I mean, I didn't want anything to do with them. And then I find out all, and then I find out all this. Well, the way I got saved, it wasn't anyone witnessing to me. I went to a movie called Jesus. That was the title, Jesus. It was at the Park Plaza, when the Park Plaza was here. It was called Jesus, and uh, went to go see it. On your own? Just no, to go? Oh. no. Okay. Someone made me go. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't want to go, but they, they didn't make me go, but they insisted. But, so anyway, I went, and it was, and it showed, you know, what he went through. And this was a very minor picture compared to yeah. Passion of yeah. what a, the, yeah. the Passion of what a, Oh, that was... <laughs> yeah. This movie was nothing, you know, right. compared to that. But at that time, yeah. that's what I saw, and I was like... I didn't know anything. I never heard about born again, never heard the word saved. You know, you don't get that. And well, back then, when I, when I was Catholic, it wasn't there. I don't know if it is now. But uh, when I got out of that movie, all I knew... In fact, during the movie, the more I got into it, the more dirty I felt. I mean, I just started feeling dirty. 
And uh, then I didn't know anything. I said uh, to my wife, then, I said, I don't know what's what. I said, I just know one thing. I want to live for the Lord. And that's what, that's how I got there. But I rejoice and be exceedingly glad. I don't need any rewards in heaven. Just knowing that I have the, my Father, that's enough for me. Amen. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 54. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and he shall be changed. For this, in, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immorality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. You know we were all dead. Right. We were all dead until we accepted Jesus. But as soon as we accepted Jesus, death is swallowed up in victory. Death no longer has a hold on us. On us. Because, you know, well, except for those who are here when the rapture comes, but before the rapture, everybody's going to die. You know, so we're all going to experience a, a physical death. Mm -hmm. But just remember this, Christians, that last, that when you take that last breath, as soon as you take that last breath, you're going to be present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Ain't not no grave for us. Yes. Might be for the shell we're in, but our spirit and our soul, as soon as we take the last breath, we'll be with God. I better put some cement shoes on because I'm <laughs> <laughs> rejoicing, being glad. We might not see it right now. We might not see it right now while we're here. But none of these sufferings that we've been through, and I'm sure some, you know, all of us have been through some kind of tribulation, some kind of suffering. But praise God, this is only temporary. This is only temporary. This is this. It's not permanent. It's, this is only a temporary. This is this is a, a a a bus stop before we get to heaven. You understand what I'm saying? It's only temporary. We're only here just for a while. Because I mean, if you look at forever, forever, even if we live to be a hundred years old, that's I mean, that's still not even a dot on a paper on what a forever is. Okay, so just remember this: <laughs> this is not our home. And this Amen. is not permanent. <laughs> Amen that. Yeah. So this everything we go through, the suffering we might be going through, it's all temporary. But God's blessings, all these beatitudes, the bless, the bless, all these blessings, they're for now. We get blessed now. They're for the millennium, the thousand years. We're going to be blessed there, and then we're going to get blessed when we get to the to the new earth, new heaven. Okay. So we got a lot of blessings coming up. <laughs> I mean, we if we don't have we're not waiting on them to happen. We're getting the Lord is blessing us now. So these blessings, they're now and they're in the future. So the Lord is just ready to shower us with blessings. The life we're living now, that we're living now, believe me, believe me, it is nothing. Nothing compared to what's coming. If we knew if the Lord would open our eyes on what was coming, he's given us little glimpse, little glimpse but if we knew what was coming, oh my gosh, you'd have to put me in a nut house in a straight jacket because I'd be going crazy. I know. Because I know it's going to be undescribable. I mean, you can't even describe what heaven's going to be like. All right. But what's going on now is very temporary. James chapter 4, verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanish away. That's what our lives are. That's what he says. He says our lives are here just for a little while. And it is. We're just here for a little while. And we don't know what tomorrow brings. You know, are we going to be here tomorrow? I don't know. We don't know. 
But we do know this. Those of us who are born again, heaven awaits us. Heaven awaits us. We're here for just a little while. Just a little while. I mean, some of us might think, man, I feel like I've been here forever. It's, we're here just for a little while. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves that. Okay. Because when things start getting rough, tough, whatever, okay, I'm only here for a little while. That's what we have to tell us. You know, we have to say that to, to ourselves. You know, we've got to remember what God says. That's why it's so important to read the Word of God. And stuff like this, you'll remember. You know, the Lord says, I'm, I know this is happening, but you know what? It's only for a little while. I'm only here for a little while. The Lord tells us in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. He tells us, He says, Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth, where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. So those of us who are laying up treasures here, and when I'm talking about treasures here, I'm talking about uh, a big savings, you know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, why are we? I mean, the Lord has told us, "What I'm giving you, use it, use it." He has not told us to put our money in the savings. And now, I know a lot of people can't, they don't accept it. Because in Matthews it says, don't worry about tomorrow. And I live very strongly on that. I don't worry about tomorrow. Because he tells me, as long as I put him first, all these things I don't have to worry about. He says that. Now if we believe that, if we really truly believe it, why are we worrying about tomorrow? Why? Do we not have enough faith? I mean, he says it in his word. I mean, if you don't believe him that he saved your life, if you believe that, then why can't you believe something little like this? I mean, the biggest part is, is, is I mean, saving your life. That's, that's a biggie. Do you believe that? I mean, he's, you're putting your life out there on the line. Now, if you believe that, why can't you believe something little as, hey, don't worry about the Lord. I got it. When you do have, I, I mean, I believe that when God gives us more than we need, we, we're supposed to share. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you specifically think of when you think, okay, well, we've got more money than we need, so what are we going to do with this pile over here? What do you, what do you believe that you should do with that? Well, I use it, uh, the Lord tells me when to use it, you know. I mean, He tells me when to help this person or help that person or help this or help that. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that's one one thing we don't have a problem with because uh, when we support something I mean this is what we do I'll come up with a number and then I'll she'll come up with a number and then we'll say well what number did you have and nine times out of ten it's the same number yeah. I mean I'm really surprised because sometimes I come up with a big number and she does too and I'm like okay that's from the Lord because <laughs> if I come up with it I mean if she comes up with, up, up with it also then I'm like okay that's that's got to be from the Lord you know but yes I I truly believe, and, it's, and it is biblical. He says, what he gives you, he gives you to use today. But if you are doing right with your money, there's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with having money. I mean, but why store it up? I'm talking about uh, retirement. I mean, really, seriously. I mean, re the, the rapture could be tonight. He could take you tonight, and you say, well... Okay, well, those money can go with my kids or something, you know. Who are you trusting in? Are you trusting in yourself for your kids to take care of your kids? Or are you trusting in the Lord to take care of you? That, now, that's also if your kids are, are Christians. Right. You know, if they're Christians, the Lord will take care of them. You know, no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So, retirement, I know people have a hard time with that one, but uh, I don't. And I'm not saying, believe me, I'm not even saying my faith is stronger than y'all's. Because there's some things y'all might have faith in that I don't. But, you know, I can't just... I have to look at my wife and understand where she's coming from. All right? So I gave the okay that we do this. But he, even my financial advisor, I gave him the scriptures to show him, hey, this is not where we're supposed to be having our money. I mean, I showed him. I mean, he knows... 
he knows us. He knows I'm not for it, but she is. And and I've given him, I've given him the scriptures and say, showing him, this is not what the Lord gave us our money for. He didn't give us our money to try to make more money. He said, if you want to invest, invest in souls, invest in rewards, and that's giving. That's Walking with him. Of, um, of a blessing to do that than mm-hmm. to just stick it somewhere and hope that it grows and. Yeah, I mean, it's just, well, and, and you get all worried when you when you start doing. I mean, I know I have because mm-hmm. I, I mean, my parents are both deceased, and my dad was a big investor in the stock market, and and so, you know, I inherited this portfolio, and I'm like, it doesn't interest me at all. But I mean, I did find myself worrying about it. You know, it's like I don't even want to deal with it anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know. Well, what money we've invested, uh, I don't. If I lose it, then I, that's what I deserve. I put it somewhere where the Lord didn't want me to put it. And she knows all this. I'm not saying nothing that she don't know already. Mm-hmm. But uh, if we lose it, I can't blame the Lord. Mm-hmm. All right? I got the scriptures on saying, on the show, that what the Lord gives us now, we need to use it. Mm-hmm. He's given it for a reason. He didn't give it to us for to save. I don't know if it's on there, but Matthew 10, verse 28. Again, now, treasures, we shouldn't be laying up treasures here on earth. So he tells us this, you know, if you want, if you want treasures, lay them up in heaven. And that's, that's rewards. You'll get rewards in heaven. That's when you're walking with the Lord, and that's when you're doing the Beatitudes. That's when you're out there witnessing. When you're doing the Lord's work, there's going to be rewards for us. He says, don't, don't try to get treasures here on earth. Okay. Not only that, he says in Matthew ten twenty eight, he says, "And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell." Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you want to get up here? <laughs> He's jumping in front of me. But anyway, we not only shouldn't we tr- uh, store up treasures here on earth, but we shouldn't fear. We shouldn't. Uh, the Lord, like it says here, He can kill soul and body. Yes. And plus, and plus, people who do have a lot of treasure, they're not happy. No, because they're, they're they're scared. They're scared of they're who's scared. trying to. Yeah. yeah, you know. So, the Lord knows what He's saying. Okay, the Lord knows what He's saying. But you know, don't fear man. And uh, but I really believe that's why these disciples who put their lives on the line, they didn't fear man. Mm-hmm. Hey, you might kill this body, but you can't kill my soul. I fear him that can kill my soul. That's what it says right here. Fear the one who can kill you, who can kill your soul. So, I can understand the disciples, and and like I said a couple of weeks ago or last week, uh, if this nation ever gets to where we have to, where they're actually killing believers, I pray to God that I'm not going to turn away from that. I pray to God if they kill me for being a Christian, then you're just going to have to kill me. I pray to God that uh that I don't turn around and run in fear. I, I pray that I don't do that. Like I said, I don't want to be like Peter and say, I'm not going to do it. But I pray that I wouldn't. Because uh, I don't want to. Like right here. Why well, fear the one who can only kill the body? I should fear the one who can kill body and soul. That's the one that I should fear. Well, look at that. It's technically if somebody was like if you were face to face and somebody asked you that, all they're doing is setting you free. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're true. That's true. Because I've told, I've told people that before, you know, especially non believers, I said, I mean, if you were to kill me right now, you'd be doing me a favor. You'd be setting me free. I'd be saying, thank you. My last words would be, thank you. I really truly believe, like Stevens, when he was being stoned, I really truly believe he didn't feel it. I really truly, feel, just like Daniel, and the, they, not even the hair, the hair on their skin didn't even get burnt. And I really truly believe that believers that go through that, Daniel and them, they came out alive, you know. Mm-hmm. But I truly believe that Stephen, the Lord protected him and he didn't feel that stolen, stoning. I do believe that. That's me. I, I believe that. Now on our great reward, back on our great reward, it says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, this is our great reward, okay? 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, 
and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is a reward. I don't know if y'all look at it that way, but this is a reward. We're going to see him, see him as he is. Right now, we just really seriously, we could read this Bible over and over and over and over, and it's just a glimpse of what God is. That's all we're getting. All right? But when this happens, it says we will see him as he is. The verses that say that to me, yeah. Also in, in John chapter 17, verse 22, it says, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Just like God and Jesus was one, right here it says we're going to be one with them. One with them. I mean, we're going to be one with God and Jesus. It's not going to be like one, like we become one. No, we're we're going to we're going to be like God. We're going to be like God and Jesus. I mean, that's it's not one like you're saying like that, but, I'm, but it's going to be the other way around. That we're going to it's going to be like one spirit. You know, we're just we're one spirit because we'll be in agreement on everything. You know, it won't be like down here with all these different denominations. Right. We'll be in total... Oh, yes. <laughs> it's not that... Now, don't get me wrong. It's not that believers are going to become God. We're not going to become gods like the Mormons teach. The Mormons teach that you become a god. Oh, yeah. And you, you get a planet. Too. And you get a planet, right. So <laughs> that's, not what it, that's not what it's teaching here. We, we become, we're one... But we're not God. Right. We'll be just like God. Revelations 21, verse 7. Revelations 21, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son. You know, us guys in here, when our father says, my son. You know, when my daddy said that, it made me feel good. You know, when he would introduce me as his son. I don't know, it just made me feel good. You know, because that's my daddy. Uh, but right here, we have God saying. He saying, and he shall be my son. Those of us who are believers. We're children of God. We're sons of God. Sons of God. We need to take a class that will teach us how to comprehend the word of God. Because yeah. like I said, I'm serious. When we read things like this, I don't think it really hits us like we, it ought to. I really don't think it hits us like it ought to. Now it might be in here. I'm, you know, I'm just looking at the whole at Christians, and I just don't believe it hits us like it should. You know, sons of God, not sons of some man or son of the president. All that is nothing. But when you when you're a son of God, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, these things that I'm reading, these verses that I'm giving you all tonight, these are verses, when you go to bed tonight, they should be a smile from ear to ear on. If we have faith in them, if we have faith in the, in the Word of God, First or Second Corinthians chapter 5, it talks about being a new creature. This will make a new creature out of you. Totally. People will not recognize you if you live by this. They will not recognize you. They will not. Genesis 15.1. I'm after to hurry. I thought y'all was going to finish tonight and I better hurry. Genesis 15.1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham. Now this is, this is, the Lord says to Abraham, which he, he says, that he's saying this to all of us. He says, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. That is, God is our reward. Going to heaven, that's a bonus. You hear what I'm saying? That's a bonus. But seeing God, seeing God, you can't get no greater reward than that. There is no greater reward than seeing God. That's what I look forward to, is seeing God. I tell people, heaven, me going to heaven, that's just a bonus. That's just a bonus I got. I don't, I'm not living for the Lord because I, I, I want to go to heaven. I'm living for the Lord because who God is. That's why I live for the Lord. Going to heaven, that's just a bonus for me. Psalm seventy-three twenty-five. 
Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides thee. He's saying right here, God is the only one. Whom have I in heaven but thee? So they're saying, we're saying, Lord, all I got is you. You're all I need. Who's down here? Who down here do I desire more than God? Not even close. No one. All right? That's the way we should feel. That's what we should feel in our heart. Lord, there is no one, no one like you. The greatest blessings for us, the greatest blessing, like I've been saying, the greatest blessing for us is being in God's presence. We'll learn, we're going to learn that one day. We're going to see it one day. We're going to see it one day. So we should rejoice for the pro- prosecution we go through because we're in good company. The last part of that verse, of uh, verse 12, like the prophets suffered, we're in great company. Not only the prophets but who, I mean, Jesus. Jesus, our Lord, suffered. So we're in great company if we're suffering for, God, for, for the Lord. We're in great company. That's what that verse is saying. We're in great company. We're, we're being suffered just like our brothers before us, our disciples, and Jesus himself. So when we do suffer for, for whatever, that's the way we need to look at it. Most of the most of prophets... And the disciples, a lot of saints of God, they're, you know, people mock them. Especially in the New Testament, a lot of them were put in prison. A lot of them was beheaded. A lot of them died by the sword. But, you know, they probably thought of what I just said. They're probably thinking the same way what the verse says right here. They're in good company because their Lord, Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ went through the same thing. Just like they're being killed, they said it's okay because my my Lord was killed. Amen. Amen. We hardly ever see Christians. Now, y'all can get mad at me if you want, but you hardly ever see Christians living the Beatitudes. Now, I'm looking at us as a whole. I'm not pointing anybody out. I'm looking at us as a whole, the church. I do not see anyone living the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes, I, I can't describe what it will do to you, the Beatitudes. I mean, when you totally know your poor in spirit, where, hey, I am totally nothing, nothing. I don't care if I'm the supervisor, president, got all this money, whatever. We are nothing, nothing without the Lord. And when we get to that point, when we can recognize and and comprehend, hey, I am totally nothing without God. That's when we'll learn how to humble ourselves, and that's when we'll learn in that church how to praise God, how to worship God. That's one thing I pray for in our church, is that we will learn how to worship. I know how to worship, but I quench it, and I'm sorry. But the one I really ask for forgiveness is my Lord, because I'm letting Him down. But if you look around, Christians are not living. The Beatitudes, you live the Beatitudes, Christians will even look at you and say, I'm serious. Christians will look at you and, and think, they won't recognize you. I'm serious. Christians, not just lost people, but Christians, will look at you and like, what's wrong with him or her? But hey, this is a start, right? This is a start right here. If we take what we've learned in these Beatitudes, if we take what we've learned and apply them to our lives, people will see it. I I promise you, I guarantee you, people will see a change in you. Not just, you know, they see a change in you when you become a Christian because you change your life. But now, we've learned in the Beatitudes, hey, there's a whole lot more to being a Christian. There's a whole lot more. I mean, have we? Have we been mourning because we sin? Do we really hate sin? Have we really been, like when we sin, do we, does it really bring us down because we've sinned? You know? Have we really been meek? Have we really had mercy? Have we really been peacemakers? I mean, seriously, have we? Nobody raised their hand, nobody says anything, but ask yourself, have I been living the Beatitudes? Well, praise God, if you haven't... <laughs> 
Praise God. God says, hey, just repent. Repent. I'll forgive you. Let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready to fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. No, you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Now let's use it. Because we have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's another thing I say a lot in this class. We as Christians, God living in us, but we don't show it. God living in us, but we don't show it. We're good people because we're Christians. We were, we're really no difference from morally good people. People who are just good because that's the way they are. We're really not much different from them. But it was when it comes from the Lord, when they see that meekness in you, when they see that poor in spirit, when they see it really hurts you when you sin. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's, that's when you know you're... <laughs> You love the Lord. You love the Lord. Well, we've seen through the Beatitudes, if we've listened to what the words say in the Beatitudes, we've seen in this class, we've seen, hey, there's got to be a change in me. You know, I thought I was living the Christian life. You know, I go to church on Sundays. I even go to church on Wednesdays. But are we doing the rest of these? Are we doing these? This is not just a regular class. The Lord gave me this to teach. He's given it to me to teach, not because of anything of me, but he's wanted to let this church know, hey, this is the kind of Christians I'm looking for. I need Christians who know they're poor in spirit. I need Christians who are really sorry when they sin against me. He says, that's what I'm looking for. I just don't need Christians who proclaim it, go to church, sing some songs, and that's all they do. Now listen to me. When they're out there, when we're out there in the darkness, he can't pick us out. This is not easy for me to say. We're different from the world. We're different from the world. And we're different from Christians who are laid back Christians. Like I said before, there's a team, a football team. There's players on the field, and then there's players that sit on the bench. I am not a player that sits on the bench. I can tell you this, and the Lord is my witness. I am not a person that's going to sit on the bench. I have been out there in the world. My, my ministry is out there in the world. And maybe that's why I don't have a church. Maybe that's why the Lord has given me a church, because my church is out there. Because I have no problem whatsoever talking to anybody about the Lord. Anytime there's a... I mean, there don't even have to be an opening, and I'll put something there. It don't even, I mean, it don't even have to be an opening. I had one at the mall. I had one big... I mean, this guy was big, a black guy. I mean, he was big. I went up to him. <laughs> I said, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ is Savior? And he just gave me that look. So I just wonder. <laughs> but this, this, this guy was big. But anyway, I, and she can tell you. And you know what? I don't have any boldness. Jack Park, how many of us know Jack Park? Jack Park, when they had the, the Exodus plane over here at the village, or I think whatever on Guffway over there, I mean, they had lines. I mean, the lines were long for that movie. Jack Park got on top of a car and started preaching. That's boldness. That is boldness. You, you, when I'm telling you, you might be thinking, "Well, he's bold." No, that's I. No, I've seen Jack Park. That man is bold. He is bold. I mean, he got up in front of all those people that were in line and started preaching. Now that's boldness. But anyway, I mean, this class, uh, I thank the Lord all the time for giving me this privilege. He's given to me. He's given to me. And I hope, I pray to God that we will take what we've learned from the Lord. Just like when we, before we start, I always pray to the Lord, open our hearts and our spirits, that we will receive, receive His words. And I've given you a lot of His words. Be attitudes. I hope you, you look at them different now. I hope you look at them and say, that's what I need. That's, well, really, that's the, the kind of Christian. The Sermon on the Mount is really delivered to believers. You know, they were supposed to that as he taught. They were supposed to be taught to believers. Well, when he was teaching them on the on the on the mount, there were a lot of well, he was he was he was a uh, talking to the uh, disciples, and they were there. Okay, so he wasn't talking to the lost people. He was talking to his disciples, right. but he wanted he allowed those people to be there so they could hear what they were missing out on. Just like here in this church, there's a lot of sermons. The Lord's, I mean, uh, the Lord, 
uh, well, it is the Lord through our pastor. Uh, we know a lot of what he says about salvation. We already know. But those people who, are, who don't know it, okay, that's because we have lost people in there. There's lost people in our congregation. And when he preaches on salvation, I don't just sit there and go, man, I already don't know. Because there's lost people in there. Now, there's some things I don't make, like on Easter and Christmas, you know, it's, I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't come on them days because it's just uh, tradition for me, okay? But when the pastor's preaching, just preaching, then I'm, I'm here. I am here because my pastor, he, he is a man of God. He's filled with the Holy Spirit, and we are blessed. And I've said that several times, and I'll say it several more times. We are blessed to have a pastor like we have. Amen. We are. Just remember this, the world, the world doesn't look at, at uh, being meek as a, they look at it as a weakness, like I said before. Being meek is not a weakness, okay? The world does not associate being humble as being happy, okay? Mourning over sin, they sure ain't going, what? You know, for us, for us. And sin, sin is, I mean, it's, a, it's sin. It's against our Father. And the world has no problem of sinning, none. So, are we letting sin affect us? Are we really letting sin affect us? Are we really getting upset, mad? Are we really mourning that we have sin in our life? Well, word, now, we're not going to go sinless. The word for sin. So now that we know, now that we know what being a Christian is, now that we know through the scriptures what being a Christian is, do we want to be a Christian? It's tough. I'm serious. It. I'm serious. Do we really want to be a Christian? Do we want to be meek and let people a lot of times just run over us and not say nothing? Like our Lord? I mean, after having this teaching on the Beatitudes, do we really want to be a Christian? Because this is what a Christian is. This is what walking with the Lord is. Now we got to ask ourselves, do I really want to, do I want to walk with the Lord? I'm not going to say you're not Christian because there's a lot of Christians that don't do this, but they are Christians. They don't show it, but they are Christians. Okay? And their rewards are going to be next to nothing. Because the Bible talks about rewards. How we serve them while we're here on earth. Okay? So the question is, can we live and walk with the Lord like the way He says to can we do it? We, if we can with the power of the Holy Spirit, is the thing is, do we want to? Okay, it's do we want to? Because none of us in here can can we can't say, well, I can't. No, if you're born again Christian, Acts one eight says, and they will receive power from the Holy Spirit. Every one of us who's born again Christian. You have the power. You have the power of God living in you. So there's there's no way you can say, I cannot do that. I cannot be meek like that. I cannot have mercy like that. I can't mourn that way over sin. I mean, sin, I mean, it, but you can. If you, let, if you allow the Lord God who lives in you to come out of you. And these Beatitudes, I'm telling you right now, these Beatitudes, even Christians, this church will see a change in, these, in us right here. Because like I said, I don't see really too many people living the Beatitudes. Now if we can, not if we can, if we allow it, we can do this. One more verse, one more verse I want to give you, I'm sorry, but one more verse I want to give you. Uh, and the reason we should hunger and thirst for the Word, and the reason this class was given, because y'all have got all the scriptures. John fourteen twenty six. It says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The Lord has spoke to you. For what, 13 weeks now? The Lord has. He says, this is why you have to go to, this is why you need to be hungry and read the Word, and this is why you go to classes to learn, so he can, so he can bring remembrance the scriptures that if you've been taught because I'm I mean seriously you'll be you'll be standing there and all of a sudden the Lord will because you've read it 
You might have forgot it, but the Lord will bring it back. He'll bring it to your remembrance. Remember what I said here? And all of a sudden it's there. And that's what you tell the person. So this is why we need to read the Bible. We need to get it here so the Lord can use it here. We need to put it in us. Because if we don't read this, how is he going to bring it to our remembrance? Remembrance says means it's, he's already told us. He's already showed us. So I want to leave you all with that verse. That's why we need to learn and study. So he can use us when we're out there.